Rule number 34. The direct object of a transitive verb is in the accusative case. When I usually introduce the accusative case, I tell my students that this is the most important concept to master with learning Latin as an English speaker. For the most part, English doesn't use cases to identify the role of a noun. Instead, it uses word placement. So dog bites man is different from man bites dog. In the first sentence, the dog is doing the action and the man is receiving it, while the roles are reversed in the second one. And since English loves to put its subject, the doer of the action, right before the verb, a sentence like, a man, the dog bites, still gives us the understanding that the dog is doing the action, the man receiving it. The term for the noun receiving the action, or more technically the person or thing immediately affected by the action, is the direct object. In our sentence, the man would be the direct object. A verb is considered transitive if it can take a direct object. So in our sentence, bites is a transitive verb. Latin puts the direct object of a transitive verb into the accusative case. The subject, by the way, is in the nominative case. That's rule number 13. If we were to give our sentence in Latin, it would be canis virum mordat. The nominative canis is doing the action, while the accusative virum is receiving the action as the direct object. Let's look at a few more basic examples. Pater filium vocat, the father calls his son. Or aprum video, I see the boar. This last sentence is a good example of the subject nominative understood from the ending of the verb. It ends in an o, therefore ego, I, must be the subject. The accusative aprum is receiving the action of seeing and is its direct object. This is so basic and so essential for understanding Latin, especially as a native English speaker in the modern world. Sometimes we see transitive verbs in Latin being relayed into English as intransitive verbs with a preposition. So the most common one that I see in my beginning classes is the verb quairo, as in this sentence, puer medicum quirit. The boy is searching for a doctor. In Latin, quairo is transitive and takes a direct object, even if is searching, in this case is intransitive in English. We need to include the preposition for in English to render the Latin correctly. A few more examples. Mater filiam curat. The mother takes care of her daughter, where we include of in our translation of curat. Puer ridet nostrum amentiam. The boy laughs at our stupidity. In this case, we use the word at to help us translate the transitive ridet. Uh, this verb, by the way, can also be used intransitively in Latin. So we can just say puer ridet. The boy is laughing and stop right there. Let's go just a little bit deeper. If we have one of these sentences, like uh, say Brutus Caesarem interfecit, Brutus killed Caesar, here Caesarem is the accusative direct object receiving the action, but we can take the sentence and make it passive, and when we do so, the accusative direct object becomes the nominative subject, since the subject in a passive sentence receives the action. So Caesarem becomes Caesar, and we take Brutus and turn it into by Brutus, a bruto, and we make interfecit passive with interfectus est. Caesar was killed by Brutus. To review, since this is perhaps one of the most commonly seen rules in Latin syntax, the accusative direct object shows the thing that directly receives the action of the sentence. So often, a Latin sentence can be boiled down to its essential parts of nominative accusative verb. So don't forget rule number 34. The direct object of a transitive verb is in the accusative case.